Okay, so we have a limiting reagent problem coupled with a percent yield problem. So the steps that we want to go through in order to figure out uh, how much uh, potential moles we have for both of our reagents, right? We've been given five grams of salicylic acid and 10 milliliters of acetic anhydride used with the sulfuric acid catalyst, we're generating aspirin, okay? And we, in our lab, created 4.13 grams. So they want us to calculate the yield, write a balanced equation, identify the limiting reagent. All right, so let's look at this. All right, I've drawn out the structures of both uh, salicylic acid, uh, acetic anhydride, our sulfuric acid catalyst, and our two products. So what happens is we will uh, react uh, sulfuric acid with um, acetic anhydride. That will generate a strong uh, electrophile for our nucleophilic oxygen to attack, all right? What forms will be aspirin in this formation where the oxygen that remains was originally a part of aspirin and this acetic group comes from acetic anhydride, all right? Acetic acid will remain and it'll be protonated because we're in an acidic me medium, okay? So I've taken down all of the data from the question stem and the relevant information uh, from the internet. So we've got the molecular weight of all of our compounds because we're need, gonna need to uh, convert those to moles, all of these uh, masses. And for our volume, we need the density of acetic uh, anhydride. So that way we can convert milliliters to grams and then grams to moles, all right? So step one, we're gonna wanna determine what is our limiting reagent. We have moles of salicylic acid or moles of acetic anhydride. It doesn't matter which one we do first, as long as we do both. All right, so let's see where we can start. I'm going to make this a different color. And we can do five grams, okay? And then maybe it'll be easier if I just use a pencil. Um, okay, so we have five grams, and then the ratio is gonna be one mole, because we're starting with this, and it's gonna be 138.1 grams. All right, so all in all, when we do this calculation, we end up, oh, even, sorry, excuse me. So we also wanna convert this to our product, right? Because in order to understand our limiting reagent, we wanna see how does this convert to product. Thankfully, this is already a balanced equation. It's a one-to-one -one reaction. One mole of uh, salicylic acid generates one mole of aspirin. One mole of acetic anhydride generates one mole of aspirin. So it's a one-to-one. -one. So I can say one mole of salicylic, and we'll just say sal is equal to one mole, and we'll say asp for aspirin. Okay, so what does this get me? I end up with potentially 0 0.36, and this is where I get to type this out, moles of aspirin. And then if I do moles of acetic anhydride, I start with a volume, okay? So I have 10 milliliters to start. And then if I want to add my conversion ratios, I have to do density. And because this is grams per milliliter, I'm putting grams on top, milliliters are on bottom. So let's just say milliliter. Okay, so this cancels out. And then similarly for molecular weight, grams is on the bottom. 60, that's a zero, 60.05 grams per one mole. And again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So one mole of, in this case, we're gonna say acetic anhydride, so I'm just gonna go acet times one mole of asp, not times, but it equals one mole. So we have that conversion ratio. Okay, so I can say cancel out grams, cancel out moles of acetic acid, and then I get one mole of aspirin. Um, my final amount of aspirin, I believe is gonna be around 0 0.176, and let's type this out. So it's gonna be,
moles of aspirin. Okay. And then finally, uh, we get to compare which one is our limiting reagent. So whichever one generates the least amount of potential uh, aspirin is our limiting reagent. So we can see here, we have significantly less moles of aspirin formed with the amount of salicylic acid we start with. So that is our limiting reagent. Um, and uh, that is also coincidentally our theoretical yield because this is as much aspirin as we can form based on whatever is limiting. So this is limiting. Limiting reagent is salicylic acid. And so then we can uh, formulate what is our theoretical yield. We have 4.13 grams of aspirin that we start with. And again, we have to figure out how much we actually generated. The molecular weight of one mole of aspirin is 180.16 grams. Okay, again, that's just an internet value. And that's gonna give us 0 0.023 moles of aspirin, roughly. Okay, and this makes sense because this is less than our potential theoretical yield. Remember, this is theoretical yield. Excuse me, this is actual yield. No, I'm so sorry. This is our theoretical yield. And this is our actual yield. Because this is what we actually generated. And so our actual should be less than our theoretical yield. Okay, and so if we do percent yield, the formula for that PY equals actual over theoretical. Draw a nice little list times 100%. Okay, and so our theoretical yield is going to be what we actually formed, and this should make sense because it's just a ratio. 0 0.23 moles over 0 0.036 moles times 100%. And then I believe this equals about 63.9% yield. Okay, which is actually not that bad. Not the best, certainly not the worst. Realistic expectations for theoretical, for actual yield. All right, so I hope this was helpful. This was the way that we generally do these problems. Again, we start with a balanced reaction. We observe how much we start with, how much is potentially formed. We want to do all of our conversions to see how much potential uh, product we can form um, and identify our limiting reagent. Our limiting reagent tells us our theoretical yield, and we compare that to our actual yield. And that was based off of the moles that we isolated of aspirin, which was 4.13 grams. We convert that to moles. This is our actual yield. Percent yield is just actual over theoretical. It's a ratio that says how much we actually got from what we could have potentially have gotten. Okay. And in this case, it was 63.9%. All right. Hope that was helpful.